Hi everyone, here's the Chemist once again, and today I'm reviewing The Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac, not to be confused with famous piece of Buddhist erotic fiction, The Dharma Bums. A few years ago, I filmed a video, like 17 years ago, really, in past ages, I filmed a video about three great books I hate, where I talked about three very famous seminal novels that I did not quite appreciate, that I wasn't able to get into. The first one was Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, um, and I since read Pale Fire by Nabokov and loved it to bits, and I'm highly convinced I need to reread Lolita, Lolita, whatever, in the future. Another one was A Wizard of Earth Sea by Ursula K. Le Guin, another writer I'm very, very interested in exploring further. I'd love to read, at the very least, The Left Hand of Darkness in the course of the year. And the third book was was On the Road by Jack Kerouac. I read On the Road when I was 19 and really did not quite appreciate it, even though, and I have to confess, I now realize, while I was thinking about this video, I realized that for a book that I read like eight years ago, it really stayed with me. Um, not just as far as the plot is concerned, but I'm talking about some of its reflections, the style it was written, the interaction between the characters, um, the main characters' takes on life in general, the main characters' takes on life in the 1950s, late 40s, 1950s in particular. The whole reading experience remained with me much more than several, so many other books that I read much more recently. At the same time, it was high time that I read some new Kerouac and when I approached uh, the Dharma Bums I was very curious to see if eight years down the road my impression of the of that writer would be different because you see I know so many people who did not get into On the Road and maybe hated it even more than I did and I also know people who love On the Road and who found it such an important book in their uh, growth as readers. Most notably Thomas Pynchon in the introduction to Slow Learner, um, uh, which is one of the very few documents we have about Thomas Pynchon's tastes as a reader, he says that On the Road he considered it at least he considered it in the 80s, one of the, uh, you know, crucial texts in American literature and a book that was so, so important on his evolution as a writer. So, Kerouac, uh, absolute genius, silly bum, did my impression change with the Dharma Bums? What I have to say is that during the first 50, 100 years of my reading experience, I was like, wow, this is um, this is great. I was wondering why don't I read more of this stuff? Why don't I just go through the whole of Kerak's bibliography? And a bit later, as the book progressed, I was like, oh yeah, that's why. The point I want to make is that um, Dharma Bums is exactly like On the Road. I mean, uh, re really, it's the same book. I don't know if the rest of Kerouac's bibliography is very different, and I'm very curious about it. Uh, Kerouac fans out there, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, the Dharma Bums could easily be just another leg of that endless trip which is On the Road. For that reason, it's going to be difficult for me to talk about it in this video without uh, keep referring to that other book, to On the Road, but I'll try at least for a few minutes. Dharma Bums is I'm not going to say a great book. It's, uh, you know, that's not neither here nor there. Uh, if, I di if I didn't have anything to say about it, if I didn't enjoy the reading experience, I wouldn't be filming this video in the first place. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I dislike this book at all. Actually, I appreciated it a lot and I'm very happy I read it. At the same time, it's a peculiar reading experience and I do think that you need to know some context about it. Uh, when you approach it. Uh, in general, I tend to, you know, look at the text first. I, I would never want to know anything about a writer or about a book before I approach it. I try to know as little as possible. Um, and I never consider the writer as a human being when I approach a text and read a book. Uh, but I do think that sometimes context is important and, you know, historical context or uh, cultural context is crucial and that is one of those cases. If I, My impression is that if you read the Dharma Bums without knowing that this is a book that was so uh, revolutionary for the time, that the way these characters lived, the way its, uh, its writer lived in the 30s and 40s uh, and 50s, was, if you don't know how revolutionary that was, this free approach, these attempts at uh, going beyond what was accepted and deemed acceptable in American society 
uh, if you don't know about all of these attempts and their importance, you may not appreciate much of the point with it. That is, of course, because this is such a quintessentially autobiographical book, even though it's still fiction, even though it's still a novel. It is an exploration of uh, admiration. It is an exploration of friendship in so many different ways, of friendships that go awry, of friendships that uh, remain, of, uh, you know, when you admire someone so much you turn them into some kind of idol or a borderline religious figure. It is very much a book about religion. It is a book about uh, reject, not really rejecting the religion of your parents, not at all, but finding a religious, a mystical experience that can some, say something relevant to you as a person, of connecting with something larger than your individual uh, potentially meaningless life, uh, of finding, of looking for meaning beyond the borders of your own culture and into foreign cultures. As such, it's a very interesting book uh, when it comes to appropri appropriating other cultures, the way this book and these Dharma bombs appropriate Buddhism or Oriental spiritualism in general, it's very interesting and some people will read this book as an appreciation of these cultures and some people will read this book as being about douchebags who don't really know what they're talking about and just cherry pick what they like about a different culture in a very colonialistic-ish way. Colonialistic-ish is my fusion of colonialist and dickish. Um, much more than On the Road, and now I surrender and I have to compare it, much more than on, on the Road, this is a book about nature too, especially in its second half, is about um, looking for yourself by isolating yourself in nature, and there's a very interesting experience the main character has going to live in a for, in a hut on top of a mountain someplace on the west coast all by himself for a while. And this is not something necessarily new. Of course, all those birded motherfuckers from the 19th century did the same, uh, you know, in the woods of, the mid, of, the, of New England and such. But at the same time, the way he does, the way he does this to reject the America of the 30s and his society and the, the place he should have in this society, you know, finding a job, getting your, getting himself a uh, salary, these kinds of things, there's a great freedom to be found there. Uh, he is trying to reconnect with deeper meanings beyond the board, board boundaries of what is deemed socially acceptable. And if all this means a little bit of nothing, is because he himself is not so sure what he's looking for, and he may be looking for absolutely nothing, he may just be a bum. There's always that possibility in here, just as with On the Road. That said, uh, I talked about these things as being um, as pertain to Dharma bumps, but it's not like they're not there on the road either, in On the Road either. I've heard from people, for instance, who believe On the Road to be a very religious book, and the journeys described in that novel as being sorts of mystical experiences, um, and that they relate deeply to uh, Jack Kerouac's identity as a Catholic. Also, when it comes to admiration, if On the Road is not by, about admiring a sort of idolized figure, what is it about at all? Does this mean that it doesn't make sense to read the Dharma Bums and you should just read On the Road? Absolutely not. This is an amazing text. It's even just if you want to approach the free writing style Kerouac wrote in, uh, which means that he edited very little. He tended to just sit down and, and go. Um, not because he was a slob, he actually exercised a lot uh, and uh, wrote all the time to be ready when he was going to write the actual thing, his actual novels. But yeah, he wrote in this in this style that I think Truman Capote later called typing not writing. Uh, if you want to approach this style, if you want to uh, read about his uh, take on autobiography, if you want to read about his religious experiences, this is amazing stuff. My impression is that if you are going to read this book, it's because, it's because you're fascinated by the beats and by these um, uh, free spirit figures that preceded the revolution, cultural revolution of the 60s, more than 10 years ahead of that, or because you're interested in the literary figure that is Jack Kerouac. In that sense, if you haven't read that one yet, it does make more sense to read On the Road. Um, it's longer, uh, Dharma Bums is quite shorter, that's the one thing it has going for it, but On the Road, uh, it's uh, such a much more seminal read. On the Road, it's one of those books 
that you are going to, once you've read it, you are going to find it in so much of the fiction that came after it. It's a bit like with some books like uh, uh, Crying of Love 49 especially and Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon. Once you've read those books, especially if you're interested in a certain type of postmodern slash slightly quirky fiction, you're going to find those books echoed in so much of the fiction that followed. But if you know On the Road already and you enjoyed it, then I'm sure you're going to have an amazing time with the Dharma Bums, which once again I was very happy to read myself, even though maybe the bits are not really my favorite literary um, period slash current. Uh, there's a lot of misogyny, misanthropy actually, Mis no uh, actually misogyny in this book, um, just as with much of the beats, uh, Ginsberg's How the Poem also has some cringe-worthy lines on that front. Uh, no, it is there. Uh, that said, uh, no, the Dharma Bums, Kerouac, it's Kerouac. You know what you're getting into. Uh, what do you think? Um, what about the, the Kerouac fans out there? Do you think Dharma Bums is among his best works? Do you compare it to On the Road? Do you think it's even better? Do you appreciate it more because it's more condensed, because it's less sprawling? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you as always for watching this video, guys. In a second, I'll put links on the screen to that video about the books I hate, which is absolutely ancient and I'm not going to watch again, ever again, because I probably say a lot of silly things in it. But you know, I mentioned it, so why not? And also to my review of Pale Fire, an amazing novel which I absolutely loved last year. And thank you again. Bye, guys.